Hello everyone, this is Apple at iOS Genius on the YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm just going to go through a run through. Uh, a friend of mine has an iPad Air 2 uh, with cellular connection and um, she's stating that she's having issues where it won't charge. So I'm going to go ahead and run through the Apple diagnostic site and then we're going to see if it pops up any errors or any issues or so forth. So we're going to go ahead and open a reflector here that I have here down at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and airplay the device to my Mac. There we go. So we're going to do this. Get rid of that. Uh, there's the device. Let's see if we can shrink it down a little. I don't know if that would work. Uh, yep, there you go. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and over to my Apple Diagnostics here. Just going to verify my credentials to log in. Put in my password, whatever that is. 584. Okay, then we're going to go on over to your settings. Go into About. Now, for those individuals that use Apple Diagnostics software, Session for a device has been archived to the inactivity. Oh, yeah, no worries. That's another device that I was running the other day. Um, people that are watching this video and they weren't, they're worried about, oh wow, uh, Apple or some certified technician in my neighborhood or whatever is going to be able to see all my information, all my content, and so forth. I can do this remotely. You can be in in Florida, and I can be in. Uh, the Midwest, where I'm where right now I'm in Chicago, Illinois, and all I need is your serial number. Tell me the problem you're having, and it'll give me in a report what's wrong with your device. Your device, not what specific app, uh, what emails you're using, etc., etc., and all that other stuff is all all you. So, like when you purchase your iPad or your iPhone, uh, what basically happens is uh, right there, right out of the box. That's all we can see. We can't see uh, what apps are you running. Um, you know, what are your accounts? Or what websites you visited? We don't see any of that. The Apple is only concerned of the actual device, the actual software. Uh, if you have any problem with the apps, then you have to go through the Apple support site for app issues and report it, or even go to the. Uh, the app store and then uh, report it to you know put a review and put reason why it's not working that's the only kind of communication there is so let's get forward and DMP and -N -K, K what is this G5 WQ I don't think it really means case sensitive or not uh, it's my reminder for the serial number and then they're having a uh, battery uh, no, no we'll say charging so as you can see, it pops up a bunch of lists there. Uh, it pulls it up from their knowledge base or so, which is charging, charging issue, charger issue, charging issue, you know, etc. Uh, you can also put, just put low battery, and let's see what that pops up. Battery life, runtime. So each one of these you do is will do a specific test for that specific issue. So we're gonna go ahead and just do charging. Uh, I don't think she's really having a charging issue. It could very well be what she's having is, I will show you, she might be using this product right here, which is not an Apple device, and also maybe it does not have the proper milliamps to charge that iPad. So, so again, it's an iPad 2, so it probably needs a 10 or a 12 watt. Um, she might be, this is the one I told her that she needs to use. Uh, this is the device. And then, don't have it here. Um, I did send her an email specifically uh, saying this is what it should look like. So let me open up notes. Maybe I have it already here. So let me paste. Yep, there it is. So I put here is the USB port on the computer does provide enough power. The quickest way is really the only way to charge your iPad with a 10 watt or 12 volt, 5 watt on an on a mini. So if she's using a 5 watt and an iPad mini, that's going to take even longer. Uh, I don't know, it probably could take like 5 hours, where if you use a 10 or 12, 
maybe be three hours, you know. But that's what you got to kind of use. You got to use the original products as much as possible. Uh, unless you can find this device that does 10 or 10 to 12 watts of power that can actually uh, transfer over to uh, convert that over to milliamps to your to your iPad. So we're just going to go ahead and select this. Uh, we're going to say uh, charging and battery. Let's say charging and battery. That's a double thing right there. We're going to go ahead and select next. All right. So these are all the diagnostic suites that we can do. The mobile resource inspector, quick test, overview, health, hardware, and software, display of backlit and color. Uh, it's not that. It's not an image quality issue. It's not a pixel anomalies issue. Uh, it's not a multi-touch issue. Uh, unexpected touch assistant identifying unexpected touch events. It's not that either. Now also understand here, look, requires iOS 8.3 or later. You see this one here, pixel anomalies, nine version and newer. So you see right now on the iPad here on the right side, she's running version 8.3. So we're at the bare minimum. So right now, none of these relate to the power or charging kind of issue. So we're just going to do the mobile resource inspector, which will just do the overview of the actual product itself. You can select on the expand info, so in case you wanted to read it more. So it's, it's basically a, a triage tool that checks for the persistence of hardware components and performs a series of short tests verifying hardware functionality. So just at use during initial triage uh, for all devices. So this is pretty mobile. MRI is pretty much what's always used in an Apple store with a representative when you're having kind of any kind of issues. They don't go to these very detail specific display backlit and color, image quality, because when a customer comes in, they'll just say, oh, this is not working. Oh, this is not working. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'm also having this problem. So they'll have multiple issues. So the MRI is pretty much the more frequently one used. So we're gonna go ahead next here on this. Now it says connect the device with A, so you gotta follow this process. So here you wanna to go to navigate to general and then you wanna select uh, privacy, which privacy is right here. Now if you have a newer version of iOS, uh, privacy will still be listed there. Uh, sometimes it's been moved around. So we're just gonna go ahead and select, oh, you know what, let me check right now. I can check on my iPhone. Uh, with the settings and let's see if privacy is still by itself yep privacy is still by itself though the settings here you see the display wallpaper sounds touch ID and passcode uh, back th uh, nowadays in 10.3 you have three six seven you have eight options where here it's more uh, less not so granular so we're gonna go ahead and select privacy after privacy we're gonna select an analytics which is up oh, Oh yeah, that's right. This is an old version, so it does not have the option of analytics. So it says, or diagnostic usage, which is down here at the very bottom, second to the bottom. Select that. A window should appear automatically. There you go. This is what I'm saying is that we can remotely do this and check your device, and we can provide you the response results that come out. So right now, that pops up automatically. So I select this. Now, let me move that iPad Ms. over. Ms. Stewart, can you please come to the office? Ms. Stewart, please come to the office. So now that it pulls it up this way, I moved it over here to the right a little. Uh, now it's in portrait mode. You want to select on agree. Now you're just going to wait. That's pretty much it. As you can see on the left-hand side, on the Apple side, it has not changed. It does not show anything different. So this will take like a good minute or so. It's on 18% battery. Uh, which is fine, you know, there's not going to be any issue there. It's currently charging. Um, I have it currently connected to my iMac uh, Pro 27-inch uh, 5K, so it has enough power to give it up the juice. This iPad originally started with like 3%, and I've only had it connected for about 18 minutes, maybe 20 minutes if that, and it's already at 18%. So it's a, it already has a high speed port. So there you go, on your iPad, that's all you're gonna see where it says complete it. It's gonna say waiting, and it's gonna say waiting forever. It's not gonna do anything different or so forth. You can select on the iPad itself, history, and it's just gonna tell you the most recent, 926. There was a history done, but it won't. You won't be able to touch it. You won't be able to 
you, you can move it up and down. These are like all your history files, uh, but that's it. You won't be able to see the details of what Apple sees, what I see as a uh, Apple certified technician. So that's already done there. So we're gonna go ahead and move this aside. Uh, or actually we can just bring it down here. Uh, so then now here, this is basically says issues found, mobile resource suspector, testing complete. You can see this is the same serial number in the top left corner. Uh, so it says software version test. Check if the system software installed on the device is up to date. Always when you visit an Apple store or when you're speaking to an Apple advisor on the phone, uh, they're always going to ask you, what is the current OS you have? And if you have 8.3, they're like, yeah, why don't you install 10.3? It will resolve all or many other problems that you have. So that's kind of why it comes up as software uh, version test. So it's a question mark there. So we want to do is select on testing complete. Once you hit that, now this will break it all down. So it goes through every option that Apple has. Here again, we're back at software. So let's go ahead and select software. And if you select it, it will pop up and it says frankly crashing apps, aggregated springboard. Okay, um, you know, unexpected shutdowns, none. Current OS, okay, it's 8.3. We know that, that's fine. So here, battery condition. You can select on the battery. Look at the battery. It is practically brand new. This dot right here, this little circle dot you see here, this is normally like in a MacBook Pro that you've used a lot of times or iPhones or so forth. It'll be like somewhere right around here or here in the middle or so forth. This is like at the top prestige. This is like it's rarely even used. Here it is. Look, cycle count right down here. 64 times it's only been charged. This is an iPad Air version 8.2 that was released back in 2015. So that means in two years, they've only used it very, very minimal. Dude, I've, I've charged my iPad Pro. I've only had it for a year already, and I'm probably close to already at seven or 800 cycles. Wow. So this is a... It's, there's nothing wrong with the battery. It must be the adapter. So here we have a Bluetooth. We'll just touch it anyways. Nothing is actually appearing. Um, camera, there's a test front and back works fine. The sensors, everything is all good. Uh, services, uh, that's all good. Uh, never has been restored from a backup history from the recall or record. Uh, and then other than that, that's pretty much it. So. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to put them down at the bottom and the top center in the, in the comments as well as in the description. I will put in any of these images or so forth that I can. Uh, feel free to subscribe and place in your comments if you will have other issues that you would like to try to test out and I can go ahead and share them over the web. Thanks for visiting iOS Genius Apple on the YouTube channel.